Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker, my name's Matt. So in this video, I'm going to explain what wildfire analysis does and how to configure wildfire security profiles and use them in your security policies. I'm going to be doing all of this using a VM series Palo Alto next generation firewall inside of VMware Workstation. Okay, so what is wildfire? Well, wildfire provides detection and prevention of zero day malware using a combination of static, dynamic and bare metal analysis. Wildfire extends the capabilities of the Palo Alto Network's next generation firewall to identify and block unknown malware. The Palo Alto Network's firewall can be configured and instructed to forward files and URLs to the wildfire cloud by attaching a wildfire analysis security profile to security policies. A virtual sandbox analyzes the file sample's behavior, properties, and activities to determine if the sample is benign, grayware, phishing, or malware. And if the new malware isn't detected, Wildfire generates signatures so that the Palo Alto Network's files can consume and recognize newly discovered malware in order to block the threat. With an active Wildfire license, latest signatures are available globally every five minutes. Firewalls without a Wildfire subscription license get the signature updates the following day. Okay, so there are three ways to deploy Wildfire. So first we have the Wildfire public cloud option. This is where the Palo Alto Networks Firewall forwards file samples to the Wildfire cloud, which is owned and maintained by Palo Alto Networks. Secondly, we've got the Wildfire private cloud. This is where Palo Alto Next Generation Firewalls forward files to an on-premise WF500 appliance. So that's a dedicated wildfire appliance where local sandboxing takes place within the customer's private cloud. However, benign or grayware files never leave the customer's network. And then thirdly, we have wildfire hybrid cloud. This is where the firewalls can be configured to send specific file samples to either the wildfire public cloud or to the privately hosted WF500 appliance. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about wildfire file analysis. A Palo Alto Networks firewall configured with a wildfire analysis security profile forwards samples to wildfire based on file type, which includes email links. The firewall uses protocol decoders to decode files that have been encoded or compressed up to four times, such as files in a zip format. There are a plethora of files that are supported for wildfire forwarding. This includes uh, APKs, so Android application package, Flash, so Adobe Flash applets, and Flash content embedded in web pages, JAR files, so that's Java applets, MS Office files, so um, Microsoft Office including Doc, XLS, PPT, uh, OpenXML, etc. Then we have PE, which is portable executable files, PDFs, Mac OS X, so Mac O, DMG, and package files, email links in HTTP and HTTPS, links contained in SMTP and POP3 email messages then archive files like RAR or 7-zip, uh, Linux executable and linkable format, which is ELF files, and also script files like JavaScript, VBScript, PowerShell script, BAT, and uh, HTML application. So there are so many files that can be sent up to Wildfire for analysis. So I briefly wanted to touch upon Wildfire verdicts. So when Wildfire analyzes a previously unknown sample in the Palo Alto Network's hosted Wildfire Global Cloud or a locally hosted Wildfire private cloud, a verdict is produced to identify samples as either malicious, grayware, phishing, or benign. Phishing is a URL only verdict, and there is a C2 response verdict as well, but this is only available through the Wildfire slash autofocus API. Um, on the firewall, this type will be classed as malware. Okay, so we've discussed the building blocks of Wildfire analysis, but how does this actually work? So let's go through a scenario. 
Let's say a user downloads an email file attachment. The firewall hashes the file and checks to see if there is already a verdict. If no matches are found, the firewall uploads the files and session data to Wildfire. So now that the file has been uploaded to Wildfire, Wildfire performs a static analysis using machine learning to understand the characteristics of the sample and classifies malicious features. Wildfire generates a verdict for the malware. Wildfire then executes the malicious file within a customized virtual machine using dynamic analysis to fully understand the intricacies of the file. Wildfire continues to examine the file using the heuristics engine and determines that it shows suspicious behavior. At this point, the heuristics engine sends the file for bare metal analysis. The Wildfire bare metal analysis environment detonates the file. Wildfire then produces detailed forensics data that is used by Autofocus and to create reports that are available to view within the Wildfire portal, submission logs and analysis reports. Wildfire then generates new DNS URL categorization and antivirus signatures for the new threat, which are then in turn added to the next Wildfire update package and becomes available to customer firewalls with a valid Wildfire threat license within five minutes. Okay, so we're going to move into the lab now. So I've logged into the firewall already. I'm on the uh, primary firewall. So the first thing we're going to do is check that we've got a, a valid license. So if we head over to the device tab, and then go down to licenses. And what we're looking for is the wildfire license and confirm that it is definitely valid, which in my lab it is. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, go and configure the deployment type. So we go over to back to setup and then we're gonna go to wildfire and then we're gonna click on general settings uh, I'm going to confirm that in this lab, I'm going to be using the public cloud. So wildfire.paloaltonetworks.com. Uh, I'm going to keep the file size limits default. Um, these can be adjusted in the production environment. Um, and for the reporting, I'm going to report on both benign files and greyware. And then click OK. I just want to take uh, a, a couple of minutes just to uh, discuss uh, a wildfire best practice. If your Palo Alto Networks firewall is decrypting SSL traffic, ensure that your allow forwarding of decrypted content is checked in the content ID settings. So in order to do that, you need to go to device and then content ID and then click on the cog in content ID settings and then you'll notice this allow forwarding of decrypted content isn't checked. So I'm gonna tick that and then click OK. Now let's just click on the um, help page and let's go and read what it says. Under the content ID settings, allow forwarding of decrypted content. Enable this option to configure the firewall to forward decrypted content to an outside service when port mi uh, mirroring or sending wildfire files for analysis. Enable this option and send all unknown files in decrypted traffic to wildfire for analysis. Now, make sure you don't overlook this. If your firewall is decrypting SSL traffic, then you need to do a little bit of research and just investigate if this needs to be set. And now, as far as I'm concerned, this shouldn't be overlooked. Okay, so on to the next step. Um, we're gonna configure the wildfire analysis security profile to define what samples should be sent up to wildfire. So we're gonna do that by going to objects and then security profiles and then wildfire analysis. And what we're gonna do here is, is clone this default one. Click okay. And then I'm just gonna name this outbound WF that conforms with the naming convention that I've already got set in the firewall. And then I'm going to change this rule to all files. It's going to allow any application, any file types. The direction is, is both and the analysis is going to the public cloud and then click OK. 
Okay, so the next part of the configuration is to add the new wildfire security profile to the existing general internet access security rule. So if I go to the policies tab, you'll see the general internet access. And as you can see, there is already a profile tethered to the policy. So in my previous video, I created multiple signature based security profiles and added each profile to a security profile group. So if I go back to object and click on security profile groups, you'll see I have outbound, inbound, internal and default. Now the one, the, the security profile group on the general internet rule is called outbound. And if I open that, you can see I've got anti-fire profile, anti-spyware profile, and vulnerability protection profile configured or selected in this group. Now, I've got two choices. I can either go back to the policy and open up the general internet access rule, go to the actions tab, and as you can see, I've got profile group, but at the moment, the wildfire analysis security profile group isn't in that group profile. So I could select profiles and then individually select each one of these. Or I can leave that at, as group and leave it as group profile, go back to objects and then go into the security profile out, security profile groups and then click on outbound. And then I can simply choose the outbound wildfire analysis profile that I created a few steps back and then click OK. By doing that, that's now been added. And as you can see, it's been added here. So that means that is now ready to go in that policy. So at this point, wildfire is now completely configured on the firewall. We have got the security profiles attached to to this general internet access rule. It's going to scan all the traffic and the wildfire security profile will just do its job. Now, the, the final thing we need to check and to confirm is that the dynamic updates are correct for wildfire. So if we go to device tab and then dynamic updates, and we go down to wildfire, you can see we've got a schedule configured so it's going to check every minute, it's going to download and install, and then it's going to sync to the HAP. So we are good to go. Wildfire is now completely configured and it will just be left to its own devices to do the work. And once we start getting traffic coming through that policy, um, we will be able to see the wildfire submissions in the monitor tab under wildfire submissions and your logs will start coming in here um, with the verdicts. Uh, don't forget to commit your changes. And that's the end of the lab. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Over the next coming weeks, I will be uploading more videos where I will be sharing more content about Palo Alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them. If you like this video, I'm sure you know what to do by now. But just in case you don't, please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video.